Hello and welcome to the latest update of the Sugarcane Rainfall Outlook for the Southern Queensland District. In this issue, we will look into how the Access S model verified for rainfall over June before covering July rainfall to date. We'll then cover short-term weather watch points before seeing what the rainfall outlooks have in store over the coming months. So how did the Access S model perform over the month of June? In the left image, we have the observed rainfall. In the middle, that rainfall converted to percentage of mean rainfall. And on the right, the Access S rainfall outlook and skill for June. We can see that the forecast for June had moderate skill of around 55 to 65% accuracy and was forecasting low odds around 35 to 40% of exceeding the June median rainfall around the Maryborough and Bundaberg growing regions and neutral odds around the Sunshine Coast growing regions. The Bundaberg and Maryborough region forecast has verified well, with the red and orange dots in the middle panel showing most locations through those regions saw rainfall below average. For the Sunshine Coast growing region, the outlook was for neutral odds of exceeding median rainfall, and the June rainfall has been quite low through there, with Nambour DAF recording just shy of 30 millimetres for the month, well below the June average of over 100 millimetres, so the model didn't capture that part of the world well this time. We've seen a mixed bag regarding rainfall so far during July, with some above average rainfall of 40 to 50 millimetres along the Burham River around Howard, already exceeding the July mean rainfall, with a week and a half still to go in the month. Elsewhere around the Bundaberg and Maryborough regions, roughly 20 to 40 millimetres has fallen, and they're sitting on roughly 50% of the mean rainfall for the month. For the Sunshine Coast growing region, we've broadly seen 50 to 70 millimetres, bringing that area close to average rainfall so far for the month. Here we have a model comparison of the seven day rainfall accumulations from 10 p.m. Thursday the 20th of July to 10 p.m. Thursday the 27th of July. We can see from the different amounts of rains these models are depicting that there's high uncertainty around the forecast early next week, with an upper trough moving over southeast Queensland late on Sunday, potentially developing a surface trough or low near the coast on Monday, which is then expected to move northwards on Tuesday. This event may bring the potential for some moderate falls around the 25 to 50 millimeter mark or even higher. This is one to watch over the coming days as the models gain confidence on the location of where that surface trough is most likely to be early next week. The surface trough or low will also bring the risk of some stronger winds, particularly near the coast, so keep an eye on the forecasts over the weekend. Here we're looking at the chance of exceeding 25 millimetres of rainfall over the week starting the 23rd of July and then the 30th of July on the right. You can access these maps from the BOM Climate Outlooks webpage and choose from a number of rainfall thresholds and this model data is updated daily. So for both weeks a 10 to 25 percent chance of exceeding 25 millimetres is forecast along the Sunshine Coast coastal fringe and less than 10 percent chance elsewhere in the growing areas. But as I flagged on the previous slide there's high uncertainty in the rainfall forecast early next week so this is one to watch to see which way things are trending over the coming days. Moving on to the month of August and we're looking at low odds of 35 to 45 percent of exceeding the median rainfall through Maryborough and Bundaberg regions and a 40 to 50 percent chance around the Sunshine Coast growing region. The model skill during July is low for the Sunshine Coast and Maryborough regions at 50 to 55 percent accuracy, increasing to a moderate 55 to 65 percent accuracy in the vicinity of Bundaberg. So we expect rainfall this August to be lower than the monthly median, and we can see that reflected in the lower values in the forecast 50% chance of at least chart on the left, compared with the historical median map on the right. Breaking the rainfall odds down further for August here, with the high chance on the left, a 75% chance of receiving, and the lower chance totals on the right, the 25% chance of receiving, to give us an idea for the potential rainfall spread for the month. And looking ahead to the spring outlook here with the long term rainfall outlook from September to November. And the model skill for this region over spring is high with a 65 to 75% accuracy in the past, which gives us increased confidence in the forecast. And we're seeing a pronounced dry signal, particularly for Maryborough and North, with a less than 25% chance of exceeding the median rainfall through the region during spring. A drier outlook is also expected for the Sunshine Coast region, with a 30 to 40% chance of exceeding the median rainfall across the outlook period. And a reminder for an alternate look at the rainfall output from the Australian Long Range Forecast Model Access S, you can check out the Climate Services for Agriculture website, Google Climate Services for Agriculture, and you can get tailored rainfall information for a point location for both monthly and seasonal timescales. 
That's it for this update. As always, check the latest forecasts and warnings on the Bureau's website or the Bomb Weather app, and please send any feedback through to agriculture at bom.gov.au. We'd love to hear from you about ways we might improve the service. See you next Outlook. Thanks for listening.